if if I'm mistaken, something went on with you with your your trainer, something like that. What's what's going on? So I met my mentor Tom. Um, upon meeting him, he let me know at the gate that I was attractive. But you know what? I do want to give you a little bit of my backstory. I did eight years Army active duty. Um, I'm 29 years old. I have an undergrade in psychology and I pursue my master's in business. I know that doesn't mean anything because this is a trucking industry. You don't necessarily need, you know, need a degree or anything. But I'm coming into trucking with a well, with, with a different type of background. I'm coming from the corporate world because the Army wasn't my only job. And I'm also coming from Army. So my expectations was kind of set, I guess, a little bit too high. And I say that in the most humblest way. However, I am mature enough to know that this is a new industry that I'm coming into. So I know I have to take the good with the bad. So that's not for number one. So I met my mentor, Tom. He let me know off rip that I was attractive. I knew it wasn't right, but to myself, I just kept saying, set your boundary. This is a male-dominated field. It is what it is. I let him know off rip. Um, I wasn't shy about letting you know him know that I had a fiance in love with. I met him when I was stationed in Korea. He's actually still overseas, you know, but we still get married. Just putting it out there, you know. So I wasn't shy about that I was in a relationship. Back to the side, I just kept telling myself to set my boundaries. So I kept setting those boundaries, and it is what it is. The thing where it really got crazy is when Tom wasn't letting me drive. You uh, let him know that, hey, I'm I'm here to learn, and I'm here to work. I'm not here to... I'm not right. You're you're not there. You're not there. You're you're not there to get in a relationship, get in the bunk. You know, you're there to you there to work and you're there to train. So you already established the fact that, you know, you wanted to set your boundaries. So go ahead and continue. And I kept setting them, you know. The thing is he on top of that he wasn't letting me drive. So I'm like, well, I know I don't know what's going on. I'm new to the industry because I just got my CDO last month. So this is my first job straight out of CDO school. So I'm like, I know I'm new to the industry, but whatever's going on, this ain't right. Because, you know, new CDO students, we talk. I'm sure you know. You know, we talk to each other and stuff like that. Everybody on my homies, they driving. <laughs> but me, I'm barely driving. And they got to, like, day four of training. And I only drove twice. To the max five hours. One time I drove for three hours, and uh, that time on day four I drove for five hours. And the little time that I wasn't driving, uh, the little time that I was driving, he was his his training wasn't effective. I mean, he just kept panicking. So I didn't know the difference to whether I was doing something wrong or he was just nervous. But whatever it was he was doing, it wasn't it wasn't effective when I'm trying to learn how to drive an eighteen wheeler. Because I'm already nervous. So every little thing that I do, he just, kept, he just kept screaming and all that. You know, like he just kept screaming, you know. So, and any time he would say something, for example, like when I make a turn, he would just yell about it and that's it. There would never be like no corrective action. So it was never like a... A, a pattern of his, of his way of learning. I don't know how to explain it. It's like every little thing he had something to say. If I set up too straight, he had something to say about it. He wanted me to relax. If I spin my eyes, he had something to say about it. Um, he didn't let me know that when he was driving, I was supposed to be resting. I don't know what I don't know. And with that being said, I don't know what I don't know. So I kept finding myself asking him questions. But if, like if I wouldn't ask him the questions, I wouldn't have never known, you know. And that also made me worry. So it got to a point where I had to pull over, and I had to tell him like, "Look, if you keep screaming and stuff, I can't continue the job because you're putting us at risk." 
Because it was a time when you. Good man. Uh, double espresso macchiato with extra foam. Sure, that'll be four fifty. You about to have me hit two cars by trying to pressure me to get over. And I'm not getting over trying to take my time to let him know, hey, this car's on my on your side. You just can't see it. And he'll still be trying to pressure me to get over. And next thing you know, he'll see the little car passing through. And I'm like, hey, I told you so. And he'll be like, oh, you know. And as a trainee, that makes me worry. Because I know if I, I was to get into an accident, that's my license before I could even use it. But here I am, you yell in my ear to do so, that's number one, illegal. And number two, why are you yelling? You know, so it was, those are just examples, you know, it was never, it was very hard to learn with his style of training. If I go to speed limit, he'd get upset. Then he'd encourage me to try to go five miles over the speed limit. I say no, he say I'm not listening. Well, if not listening means that I refuse to do something illegal, then I guess I'm just not listening. Because like I said, I'm new to the industry, but I'm not new to life. Back in the day, I got tickets for going five miles over the speed limit. <laughs> so I know it, it, it just didn't sound right. Um, but if I go too slow, he yells. If I, go too, if I go to speed limit, he yells. Or if I even make a mistake in speed, he yells. It was never like a consistent way of teaching, you know, he was just very antsy the whole time. And I didn't understand what I was really doing wrong the little time that I was driving. And that's the problem, another problem that I was had, um, that I had, I was, I was barely driving. So I really, he really couldn't get used to my driving style anyway, because he was barely letting me drive. So I just felt like I wasn't learning nothing. So I contacted um, the training office to let them know what was going on. Um, I acted cool the whole time, but I just quietly sent the email to the training office. And then I let them know, like, look, when I pulled over, like, I can't do this. So he called the driver manager. Um, and um, she wanted to talk to me. I talked to her. But she wanted, she, she asked me for my side of the story. But once I gave her my side of the story, she tried to tell me what I was saying wasn't true. Hey, it, she was like, it is true. He does pre-trip every morning. Well, I'm like, well, he hasn't pre-trip since I've been here, and I'm trying to figure out his battle rhythm or his way of doing things. But he hasn't pre-trip, he hasn't done this, he hasn't done that. I just feel like I'm his passenger princess, and I didn't sign up for that. The thing is, she didn't want to hear it. She was convinced that it was me and not him, and I need to listen to my trainer. So I got upset with her, and I'm like, well, ma'am, if you're going to ask me what happened, just to tell me what happened, I'm talking to the wrong person. Because if you don't take accountability, or, you know, at least try to acknowledge my feelings or anything that I'm, you know, experiencing, we ain't going to never get nowhere, then you're going to have a messed up, you know, trucker out there. I ain't even, I wasn't even backing. We sat for two days, I'm asking him to let me back. He didn't want to, we, we wasn't backing or nothing. Just sat for two whole days. You know, yeah, it was it was day six of my, I left the truck, I'm jumping forward a little bit. I left the truck day six of my training, but two of those days we sat. So I really wasn't, which was probably, I know it probably wasn't his fault, you know, but I just felt like, Okay, we in the parking lot for two days sitting at this Lowe's. I could have been out doing all types of stuff. The, the parking lot was empty for the full two days. But even when I was trying to, you know, at least pipe his back and he didn't want to do that. So I was just trying to study what I can on my own, just asking questions about, you know, the system, how we log in, stuff like that. Just a, any little questions that I thought I could ask, you know, um, for fast, but I'm, I'm jumping ahead. So he just, she asked me what happened just to tell me what happened. So I'm like, you know, I got off the phone with her. I got upset. Um, and I mean, I didn't hide that I was upset. So um, now they're trying to figure out how to get me off the truck. Um, but they didn't really want to drop me off and abandon me. And I, I acknowledge that because I, I heard horror stories, so I'm happy that didn't happen. But I was prepared to leave just in case they was to do that. 
So, um, he took accountability. He apologized. He heard me out when I was on the phone with her. Um, he told me that he felt like I've been driving great, which I was surprised to hear because the whole time, you've been yelling the whole time. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, and I don't, I feel like I wasn't learning during, you know? So, he took accountability. He told me he's going to stop yelling all the time because it's obviously making me nervous or whatever. So, he told me, I'm going to have you drive from this place all the way to that place. And you're going to get some good driving time. I was excited to drive over five hours because I know the regular work day for a truck is, is 11 hours. So, of course, I want to see if I got the endurance to do it, you know, to do this job and to figure out how can I build it up. But how can I figure that out if you're not even letting me drive over, five, you know, five hours, you know? So, the next day, he drove from one place to the other. That was an 11-hour drive. He drove the whole way. He had me in the front talking to him the whole time. He didn't want me to drive. His plan was to have me drive the whole way um, the next time, the next day. So, in my head, he already told me our plan. Make a long story short, sure. When the next day came, we, we rolled out at 3 a.m. By the time we got to, um, I believe, maybe 8 o'clock a.m., we took a 30-minute break or something like that. Um, then we got back on the road. By the time it was 10 to 8, I asked Tom, hey, I wonder how long I've been driving. How does clock work out? Like, how, how does this clock work? Because it says this and all that. But I'm calculating off my fingers. I've been driving for this long. So I'm just, it's just a basic question. I'm not, you know, I'm not complaining or anything like that. It was a general question because I genuinely wanted to know what I was looking at. So he was like, oh, you only been driving for five hours. So I'm thinking in my head, well, I thought I've been driving a little bit more, but okay, I'm just letting him explain the clock to me. So like I said, at this point, it was 10 away. Fast forward, he like, well, you've been driving for five hours, so, you know, you can always pull over when you when you get tired. Mind you, he's been asking me to pull over since I started driving. Not asking me to pull over, but suggesting that I can pull over if I'm tired since I started driving. And I kept insisting to him that I'm not tired. You know, I, I got it. I've been waiting for this chance to drive. I want to drive. So the whole time I was driving, he was insisting that I pull over if I was tired. So now, fast forward to this point, he's like, well... You know, if you're tired, you can pull over. And I'm like, no, um, I, I think the trip was only, what, five more hours? I, I, I think I'm good. He was like, all right, cool. So I'm like, all right. He said, but at 11 o'clock, you can pull over. um, Because when 11 o'clock hit, you will have eight hours. So I'm thinking to myself, well, you just told me at 10 away I only been driving five hours. Fast forward 45 minutes, how does that change from five hours to eight hours? So I'm like, are you sure? He was like, yeah, yeah, if you want to, that'll be your eight hours. I'm like, no, I don't want to. You know, if you can, I will actually like to drop the whole way there. Because the whole way there, I believe, was 10 or 11 hours. So, um, he was like, okay. So here's where it gets crazy. When I pulled out, when we pulled out at 3 a.m., mind you, I'm in the right place, right time. I'm only doing what my trainer asked me to do. He said, we're going to leave at 3 a.m. We pull out at 3 a.m. We pull out at 2.47. We leave at 3 a.m. He looking at the, uh, I guess the load. I'm still trying to learn the language or whatever. Um, that he got to drop off at this certain place. He realized on our way down, we're going to be late making this drop. This was established before we, like, as we was leaving. He was realizing as we were driving. So he called the DM to let her know, like, hey, call whoever to see if we can uh, make a, make this job at another time. It's going to probably be an hour late. So that was established. So fast forward to me and him talking about whether I need to pull over or not. He's still telling me, well, 11 o'clock, you need to pull over. That's going to be eight hours. I'm like, how is it going to be eight hours? You just told me I was dropping five hours. So I let him know I want to drive all the way there. He played it cool. He saw an exit for a love. He told me to pull over at love. Um, he he's gonna drop the rest of the weed out.
No, at that time I had really only been driving for five hours. I didn't even make it here. It's not what I ordered, man. Yeah, it is. That's not a macchiato, man. There's no foam in there at all. Yeah, there is. There's some right there. No, 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 no. A lot of foam. A lot of foam. Dude, look. This is like half milk. Let me make it to you like my cloud. So now I'm frustrated. So he get off the truck. You know, he left the truck running, so I stayed in the truck. By the time he came back to the truck, I got off the truck to use the restroom. And to send my email, like, look, I need a new trainer. That's when I made the decision to go ahead and get a new trainer. Because the first time I sent the email, they uh they they contacted me the next day. They asked me if everything was okay. So we had to we had to talk. He took accountability. You know, I gave him my grievances and stuff like that. So the, you know, I I really want to. I didn't. Nobody. I feel like nobody comes into trucking training or what it, like the training period wanting to start over. We want to get through it. So I really didn't want to start over, but I, at the same time, I want to get this stuff right. So I went ahead and emailed the training office again and let them know. See, I think I want to move forward. So fast forward. He got the music blasting. Um, on our way back, I'm on the phone with my mom. Just been to her a little bit. Um, I was thinking to my brother a little bit. He dropped trucks. Um, but he got the music turned up. I guess it's not fun hearing somebody in about them. And I take accountability for, um, for that, you know. Um, so I just get off the phone, you know. Um, I just felt like my time was wasted because at this point we were on day six. You know, you agreed that you was going to, you know, if I had an issue to let you know, but when I did what you said, you still fought against it. Oh, well, you can go five miles per hour. It's not a big deal. You know, stuff like that. Um, So we get back to the terminal. I get myself off the truck. At, at this point, I just said that I'm getting off the truck. My, the trainer also tell me I have to wait another month for a trainer. So I'm like, all right, cool. I mean, everybody's telling me, oh, you should find another job. But as I do my research, I'm seeing that it's not too smart to resign during orientation. I am new to this industry. I'm not trying to mess up, you know. So, um, I'm just, I'm thinking in my head, I'm just going to stick it out. This was last Thursday when they got me back to the hotel, you know. Um, so I'm not mad at them for doing stuff like that because I didn't hear horror stories. They got me back to the terminal. They got me, a rental, they got me back, um, back to the hotel for the night. They got me a rental car the next day and I got home. So it's, I'm not really, I don't really have anything bad to say about the company. But they told me they was going to give me a new trainer on Thursday night to wait a month. Got home on Friday. I'm sorry, I got home on Thursday night. Fast forward to yesterday, Monday, they told me that I'm terminated because I made Tom miss his drop. And I'm confused. I'm like, well, what they got to do with me? Because him missing his job and me wanting to switch trainers is two isolated incidents. He was like, well, they was like, well, it's a performance based, uh, I guess, um, I don't know. And you made him miss his job because you decided to come back to the terminal. I'm like, you know, I, I try to let them know it was established that he was going to be late for his job when we left upon leaving. <laughs> so I was confused on how they tried to blame it on me. Because actually what happened was when the DM called him back with a new time for the job, it turned out to be the next day. They had to reschedule for the next day. That's when he made the decision to go ahead and drop me off to the terminal. So that's what I was trying to explain, but they really wasn't trying to hear it. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm new to truck and I'm not understanding the severity of what's going on. So I'll call another trucking company. To my knowledge, if you work at a company, whether you went to the orientation and didn't finish, you got to put it on your resume. So I'll call another trucking company to let them know the situation that I'm in. He said, oh, wait a minute. Well, you're going to have to get that straightened out because you could possibly have this on your deck before the determination. Then if you do, we can't hire you. 
I'm like, oh, crap. Let me call them back, you know. Call them back. The training office couldn't tell me about my death report. I had to call HR. So they were coming to HR. And sure enough, HR says, yeah, on your death report, you have a termination. And it says failure to perform. I'm like, what? Why? So, because that's exactly what she said. She said, if it said, the person from the other company, she said, if it says that, nobody's going to hire you. So when he read that off to me, the HR person, I started to explain to him what happened. He like, well, I'm not the person you need to talk to. The person who actually did the determination the, um, the was such was so and so. So he gave me a number and an email to so and so, and I talked to him, trying to explain to him what happened, and I didn't understand how that fell on me. Cause the Tom never trip planned the whole time I was with him, and that was one of the things. I'm not saying truckers are, are supposed to be perfect, but I at least want to learn how to do stuff right. You know, when I'm in training. He never trip playing. He he just never. I don't know. I don't know. How to, he just was doing what. I just felt like I was just riding with him the whole time. So, um, I'm letting him know what happened. He don't want to hear my side of the story. He's like, well, I don't know what to tell you. Um, you made a decision, and there's nothing else I can do for you because I don't understand why you explain yourself. The decision is made, and I'm like, well. Why put that on my deck report, though? Like, why are you trying to screw me so early in my career? I just got my CDL last month. So he like, yeah, whatever, you know. Sorry, it's not going to be a big deal. You should get another job. So we hang up. And I'm sitting here freaking out. Like, you know, I'm trying to remain professional and stay calm. But at the same time, I know what's being done to me is not right. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to start documenting this with HR. Something I probably should have been doing the whole time, but I didn't realize it was going to go this way. I really didn't. So, I called the number back. I'm thinking I'm calling HR, but I make a mistake and call him back. So, he asked us the phone. Um, he was like, hello? And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't mean to call you. I'm actually trying to get in touch with HR. So, if you only had the number to HR, I didn't have, like, any email. So, I was trying to get HR's um, email. So, he was like, no, this is not HR, this is such and such again. You know, I'm actually about to leave for the day. But, um, Ms. Dominique, what is your goal for our company? What are you, what are you trying to do? And I let him know, I'm like, well, I'm interested in trucking as an industry. And I actually, you know, I was excited to become a truck driver because I feel like that's the best way to learn the industry, you know. And I was explaining to him my side of the story. And I'm like, you know, I see that my, that Tom and the DM, told you they side. So at this point, it just seemed like it's my word against theirs. But if you're going to terminate me for failing to drop the load, I don't know if you can tell me this or not, but is he terminated too? Because at this point, it's an e, it's a e, EOC, I believe that's what it's called. Equal opportunity, you know, complaint, you know, and a, and a lawsuit. And then I'm in this checking group. I see that somebody else is destroying this company. So... I didn't tell him about any losses or anything like that, but I just let him know that was an equal opportunity type of complaint, you know, and he was like, yeah, I know, and blah, blah, blah. He was like, look, I have a proposition for you. So I'm going to give you till tomorrow at this time, which was 1600 at the time, to call me back. If you want to go along with training, we can do that. Um, I'll just get you a new trainer or whatever. But if you don't call me back at this time, the determination is going to stay on your deck report. Um, so at this point, you got to understand, now I'm, I'm kind of scared to move along with training because I'm seeing how they're rolling, you know, like I don't really know if I should move forward, but at the same time, my hands are twisted because I just talked to all the mega carriers and they're all I'm saying the same thing, so it, they can't be lying, you know, and I don't want to take my chances. So I'll let him know, um, I'm going to have to call you back. So I get a phone call back. He calls me back. He was like, hey, such and such said that you found a new job. I told him, I said, I didn't find a new job. Um, however, who was going to wait for a training for a trainer for almost two months without looking at potential jobs out there? But I told him, I said, I'm not looking for a new job. I don't have a new job yet. You know, he was like, okay, because I just wanted to let you know if you wanted to resign, you're also welcome to do that. 
you know, and blah, blah. And I was like, you know, thank you, but I'll just think about it and um, call you back tomorrow. So that's pretty much it. I mean, that's my story. I mean, I don't know. Hey, man, you don't want to give me back my 450? You want to give me back my 450? No. No? No. Have you ever heard of that type of stuff before? But that's a lot. <laughs> I black I blackmail. This right here is ridiculous. I'm I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up. Uh, number one, I know you're new to the industry, and a lot of people this this is where. You new guys come into the industry and y'all really don't know anything. Y'all don't know how 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 the trucking companies that y'all choose to go with get down. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. by you kind of, you know, calling the other companies and say, hey, I'm a new driver. I'm with this company. It's not going right. Here's my situation, and I got terminated. That's a red flag. You shouldn't say that you got terminated. Not to any other trucking company, especially this early in your career, especially if you didn't get terminated for any safety reasons. Okay? So uh -huh. next time you call a company that you're looking for, that you're interested in, just kind of tell them, hey, me and the company didn't get along with each other. And, you know, the training didn't work out. I decide to choose other routes. So I'm not sure what they put down as, you know, as me leaving the company. Okay. So don't, don't give companies information that's, not asked to give if you know what I mean you know because uh -huh. they don't put that on your DAC report right away it's about 30 some odd days if that is going on your DAC report and I wouldn't I, from what I heard I don't even understand why that would go on your DAC report because see the company is lying they lying they making they making something that the trainer did your fault and it's not your fault. You're you're the trainee. You there to learn. Dude wasn't doing his job. He sucks as a trainee. I mean, as a trainer, my fault. Trainer. Dude sucks. Period. All he wanted you to do was to come on in there and just be a cash cow. And being that you was a female with some soft legs, he thought he was going to get some. You didn't go that route with uh -huh. him. You didn't go that route with him. So he turned around. He, he turned around and became an asshole. When you went to the company, the company should have should have took what you told them in the account and say, hey, let's get you off that truck. So we could put you with another trainer. Now they call themselves doing that and telling you you have to wait a month. I mean, I understand trainers are are hard to come by, maybe. But to say, but to say failure to perform, how is that on you? Dude wasn't even doing, dude wasn't even giving you the opportunity to perform. What, drive five hours? Drive five hours? That's no perform. Oh, here, pull, pull over here, and I'll and I'll drive the rest of the way. Ain't ain't showing you 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 guys was down for you said two days, and t he didn't take that opportunity to do any backing maneuvers in the parking lot? I'm sure if y'all was there for two days, y'all had ample, ample uh, amount of truck space 
to do whatever y'all need to do. Drive around the parking lot, drive around in the neighborhood, or, or yeah, drive around. That's what I'm saying. Drive around in the truck stops or whatever. Or, or backing. Backing. You know, when when you're out when you're out with a trainer, the trainer is supposed to have patience. If this dude was all in a tizzy and everything, he shouldn't have been training. If he's if he's so scared that you might turn off or turn or something like that, he shouldn't be training. If you do something wrong, he should have been patient enough to say, hey, you know, make sure you stay in your lane. Make sure you don't veer off to the left. Make sure you don't veer off to the right. When you come up to this corner, make sure you, you know, you get some room so you can make that turn. Or whatever the case, patience is the key, period. If you don't have no patience, then you don't need to be training. You don't need to be training. Right. You, you don't need to be training. You yourself, you yourself wasn't comfortable with his style of training. When you tell the company that, the company should be like, okay, you're not comfortable with him. Let's get you with somebody that you can be comfortable with. Because if you're not comfortable, that whole situation is going to be, it's, it's going to be toxic. He's going to be doing ill stuff. Like, for example, what you just said, he blasts the music while you back there trying to get some sleep. How are you going to get some sleep and you blasting the music, bruh? Or if I'm talking to my family or whatever, whatever, we, whatever the reason I'm talking to my family. I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that in a second. But whatever reason I'm talking to my family, Show me some respect by, you know, not blasting the music. If I'm driving and you talking to your girlfriend, boyfriend, significant other or whatever, your mom, pops, dad or whatever, I would give you that respect and have the radio turned down. Or off for that matter, because I'm trying to learn to drive. I'm not trying to be distracted. So if I'm in the back trying to get some rest or if I'm in the back talking to my family, show me the respect, bruh. He didn't respect you. He disrespected you. He didn't train you properly. And, and the company that you drive for or uh, that you're driven for, in my opinion, they suck too. Because if they... Want, if they didn't take accountability for what this particular trainer did to you, obviously this trainer is no good. Obviously, he must have had some issues with some other trainees as well. I, I, From what I hear, I don't believe you're the first person that came to them and said, hey, this trainer sucks, bro. I need to get with somebody else. Again, back to the failure to perform. That was his fault. He missed that time. That ain't had nothing to do with you. Even though you wanted to go back to the terminal, you didn't even know that he was on the time limit or anything like that. Did he mention that to you? Mm -mm. He, <laughs> so he didn't so he didn't say, hey, let me go ahead and drop this off. And then after we do this drop off, I'll get you back to the terminal ASAP. He didn't say that. Yeah, cause well, it had to be rescheduled for the next day because it was established upon leaving that we was gonna be late. So he called the DM, and she called back in the afternoon. Uh, in the um, yeah, at noon time, and let him know that we had to reschedule the drop the next day. So that's the reason why I got dropped off to the terminal. Okay, not so, because so he how didn't miss so how's so how's that your fault how are they going to put that on you I don't know. he talked to the dm that should be I, documented I, I, so the dm was the one the dm was the one that gave him the okay to bring you back to the to the terminal because they rescheduled the drop right right 
So, again, how is that failure to perform? Like, what you performing? You're not, you're, you're not performing anything. Dude ain't teaching you nothing to perform right. See, what this company did, this company from the jump set you up for failure by putting you with this bum-ass trainer. That's what they did. That's what they did. So again, uh, going up to the, you know, get, you know, when you call in for other jobs. Yeah, I'm not going to wait around no month for you to find another, another trainer for me, especially if I'm not getting paid. Am I, am, am I getting paid while y'all taking a whole month to find another trainer? I mean, I understand trainers are, 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 are limited. I get it, but a whole month though? And I'm not getting paid and you expect me to sit around to wait while you get another trainer and and I'm not getting paid. No. No, sir. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. You get on the phone and you start making phone calls. Hey, uh hey company B. My name is such and such. I just got my CDLs. Um, unfortunately, the company that I'm with don't have trainers. That's what that's what you probably should say for now on. This company don't have trainers. Mm -hmm. They didn't have the. Tra they don't have trainers for me. And I'm I'm looking to get into the trucking industry so I can start getting my experience so I can start making some money. What can you do for me, Company B? Okay, well, fill out the application, yada, 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 yada. And on that application, when it says, do you want us to call that company? You check no. Uh, hey, man, how are you? Oh, hey, man. You remember me? Uh... That's what you check. No. Do you want us to call the comp current cup? No. That's what you check. Now, even if they are look at going to look at your debt report, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Now, if they do look at your debt report and they come back to you and say, well, hey, you know, company A says this, that, and the third, then that gives you an opportunity to explain that, hey, that bum trainer that they had me with wasn't no good. That's what happened with that. Mm. That's how you do that. That's how you explain that. How can you how can you perform anything if you're a brand new driver that just got your CDLs a couple of weeks ago? I I, I you you don't drive the truck by yourself. You didn't miss any appointments. Nope. You didn't get in any, you you didn't get any any situations. So what performance that I'm doing? I'm the trainee. The performance is the trainer. He's supposed to be doing what he's supposed to be doing. And he didn't do that. Ma'am, sir. They didn't do that. So Next time when you fill out or call these recruiters, you tell you they they give you the application, the Intelli link. You don't you don't give up no information. Only information, hey, I'm a new driver. I just got my license. I was at company A. Company A didn't have no trainers, or the trainer that I was with wasn't no good. Yada yada yada. Keep on and keep it moving. Do you want us to call that company? No. That's what you do on that part. And of course you're not gonna mm. of course you're not gonna wait. You didn't get your you you didn't pay all that money for your CDLs to wait. You you're 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 trying to get in, not to wait. If you going if I have to wait, pay me. If you asking me to wait, pay me. 
It's not my. It, it's not my fault. I felt like they wanted me to quit. Say what? Wait, maybe they wanted me to quit. I didn't know what they were talking to me. I, well, that's no, that, that's what's saying. the whole. That 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 was the whole point because, like I said, the company set it you up from failure from the jump. The convo, the conversation between you and 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 what the what the the fleet manager, the the uh, uh, opera, uh, fleet manager. So, but that conversation between you and the fleet manager, you over here trying to explain your situation. Was it a he or a she? It was a, it was a man. So he's trying to tell he he's trying to. He's trying to backdoor you and saying, oh, well, everything what you're saying is false. But, you, but you're but you with the trainer. You you there experiencing the trainer. So that tells me that he had conversations with other trainees about that trainer. He had to. How long you been with the company? I um a week. I was... I was only on day six of training. Day six days. Six days. Day six. Day six of training. So I did orientation and yeah. So they they initially gave you everything you need to get back home. They didn't strand you. That's that's good. I'll I'll give them that. That's that's commendable. That's the only thing I can see. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll give them that. They got you back home. But they got you back home on the pretense. Yeah. They got you back home on the pretense that they was going to put you with yeah, another trainer. Yeah. yeah. But you get you you get the faithful phone call talking about oh well we terminated you. Just like that, like how, why? There there wasn't no insubordination. There wasn't no, uh, there there wasn't no 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 nothing there. I mean. I, you know, I wasn't comfortable well, with the training. I, I went ahead and called them and let them know I was full with the training. So, <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't know if I'm scoring myself. My humble opinion, my, my humble advice, I wouldn't go the rest of the way with this company after seeing what they have done to me thus far. Because ain't no telling that you you'll get with another you'll get with another bum trainer, and you you end up in another situation, and then they can just easily come back and say, "Oh well, it's you. You're the problem." So, right. yeah, I mean, like I said, this 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 right here is is a great conversation. Because I am afraid. I don't feel comfortable at all. I don't feel comfortable, um, and it was so quick. I gotta meet the guy at three o'clock in the morning because the phone calls was just that quick, you know. Oh, they they was able. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. okay. So they was able to find another trainer because you mm -hmm, you you quick. threat you 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 kind of sort of threatened them with the with the with the with the, with the uh, equal opportunity employment. Yeah. So what they can do now, you think they ain't cahoots to screw me over? Because I just want to drive. Again, like I said, we're we're not mentioning the company. Um, we're not mentioning the company or anything like that. Um, but I would, I I would think, you know, because it is, you know, it, it, I ain't gonna I, I ain't gonna trip. It is it it is hard for you guys. I mean, right now. You know, you got you you got multiple companies that say, yeah, we need this, yeah, we need that, yeah, we need this. But here, you guys coming in as coming in droves, and all you guys is coming in saying the same thing that, hey, you know, I'm a brand new driver, and 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 they don't want to, uh, you know, they don't want to they they don't want to do this for us and do that for us. You know, I, I you know. At the end of the day, it, it it all boils down to you. But me personally, I wouldn't go back. That's that's just me personally. Um, 
you don't have to you don't have to run with that i know you just want to i know you just want to drive and you want to you know try to make your money and everything but me personally i i wouldn't i, I wouldn't go back i would just I, I would just tell them thanks but no thanks i'll i'll try you know i'll try my hand with uh with another company and um and thanks for the opportunity that's that's about it that's about it but again like i said man i mean you know what it, what what you went through was 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 crazy it was crazy why don't you make me a double espresso macchiato with extra foam you got it whoa, whoa, whoa. why don't you make it like your life depends on it easy I, you know and i i hear this all the time you know, we I, I talked to I talked to many of drivers that had uh that had situations like this. That's why I said this this need to this need to come this 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 need to be heard because you're you're not the only one that went through uh situations like this, especially And with, I only with, mention like, you know, you know, my my background just to just to narrate, you know, that I got some, some time on me. I'm not like some you know, I'm just I was just, it's a culture shock for me, you know. Um, just a narrative that I, I actually, I went on the truck to be a professional. You know, I wasn't there trying to look for a good time, like you said, you know. So I'm coming from a, a whole different world, coming straight out the army into trucking, you know. And I just see it's really no standard, because they can put anything on your deck before and they'll screw you over for life. I'm not used to that, you know. So it was a big learning curve for me. Um, and it kind of makes me don't want to do it anymore. I, I just kind of, I can't lie. I feel like if this don't work out with the train, I may really don't even do it. And I spent some of my GI Bill on this CDL, you know. But I just feel like if it don't work out with me and this new trainer, I may hang it up. I don't want to do it because I think I'm going to like trucking. I liked it when I was behind the wheel. I like the freedom that it offers. I come from a corporate world because after the army, I went to work for the government, but I decided that wasn't for me. So I felt like trucking was going to give me what I was looking for. But I, I do hate to say that trucking isn't for everybody. I mean, I'm 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 sitting here listening to you. You know where you came from. How how many years you spent in the army? Eight years active duty. Eight years, so you um, had twelve years to go. What happened? <laughs> I got out. It's just not for me. Um, I went in and I did my time honorably, but I mean, cause I'll commend those who stay in. But um, I don't know. I just feel like. People have to get to a point where they have to figure out if something is for them instead of just wasting their time in it. So I, I don't want to keep wasting time. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you figure that that was eight. You said eight years. So this is what twenty twenty three. So you 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 came out when uh, eight years? What well, what? Back in twenty tens when? 2014. Jeez. So 2014 was your eighth year, man. So you what? 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Jeez. Yep. You you would have been done in 21. It's not that simple. <laughs> mm mm. I'm good. Like I said, it's not the best on me. They did great things for me, but um, I had to move on. So, um, I hear you. I hear you. I, I'm just wow. I, jeez. I'm just looking at. I'm I'm looking at it from a standpoint. Like, jeez, you would have, you you would have had your twenty at twenty one. Like, at least. But uh, but mm -hmm. you know, just just like the army, like you know, like you said about the army is not, 
it's not for everybody. Trucking is not for everybody either. So, um, right. You know, um, you you said you came back. You said you came out, and you was you was doing government work. Like, what you 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 was doing? Mm-hmm. What, what kind of government work you was doing? HR. Um, yeah, uh, the office, the corporate world is not for me. I just really, as far as, I, 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 I'm attracted to trucking because it's an industry, not as far as just like a job. So I just know I can do that type of work in trucking too. So I thought the best way for me to learn trucking is to become a truck driver. And I think, I mean, there's a lot of money in it. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't want to go straight to the office and, you know, because I'm getting my master's in uh, in logistics, you know. So I don't want to go straight to the office or whatever. I would like to be a truck driver because I think it's, I'm not saying it's fun. I, I saw a little bit when I was in training, so I know what I'm up against, but I can do it. I just really want good training. And I just feel like, I don't know, the industry as a whole, it's a billion dollar industry and there's a lot of money in it. You can be successful in it. It's just, excuse me, it don't seem like it has a standard when it comes to like, you know, just certain rules or whatever that's in place and stuff like that. And you got people that just bounce around and stuff like that. And I feel like maybe the corporate side of trucking, they take advantage of that, of people that that's ignorant to their rights, you know? And I think he expected me to just be like, oh, okay, I'm terminated. Okay, it's my fault, you know. Um, and I I feel like if they've done that to me, they did that plenty of time, you know, because that's just something that they're used to doing without getting repercussions, maybe. Um, so that's all, that's all I have to say about trucking. I think I'm going to like it, but I see what I'm up against. <laughs> yeah, and you, it's scary. Yeah, you up, you, you up against it's a, scary. You, you up against a lot. <laughs> I'm here to tell you. Yeah, yeah, it's scary. yeah, you 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 up against a lot in trucking, especially trying to get the get with the right company, uh, get the right training, get the right trainer. You know, it's 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 cumbersome, and that you know, and I'm I'm sorry to hear, you know, your situation. You know, I'm, I'm sorry to hear what happened to you, but like I said, you know, my my opinion, I, and I'll just leave it at that. You know, I won't give you no advice, but I'll just give you my opinion is that if it was me in that situation, I I, I would uh, I, I would just leave and try my hand with another company. Because after after all, mm. after all of that. After all of that said and done, um, I I just think they set it you up from failure from the jump. Big G's got it locked. What you doing?